Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino ranks every boss in Batman Arkham City from easiest to hardest. Like the last game, some bosses are more like encounters, but I'm still counting all the ones where you actively take down the target. Like Bane doesn't count because you just fight some dudes together and then he runs himself into a cage during a cutscene, but Zaz counts because you have to physically go up and knock him out, even if it's not really a fight. I don't have footage of the Riddler because collecting, solving, and destroying hundreds of trophies, riddles, and breakables across a gigantic open world sounded like an absolute nightmare, but I watched a video of his thing and can surmise that he'd be second or third easiest if I was ranking him. This is still hard mode, even though you'll see counter icons in the battles, they changed it from Asylum to where now they only remove those if you're doing the New Game Plus challenge. Starting from easiest and working our way to hardest. Number easiest, Deadshot. The easiest boss in Batman Arkham City is Deadshot, and I don't know if I even have enough time to finish this. Number 11, Victor Zaz. Another boss you don't really fight, you just have to get to. Zaz spends the whole time obliviously squawking about how he's gonna make his mark. Meanwhile, the only marked target in the room is the back of his bald head. Do pump rooms usually flood and unflood with boiling water at regular intervals? That seems dangerous. Hope the regular workers get hazard pay for that. I don't know if you can even be seen during this obstacle course. It Looks like you'll be caught if he looks out the window at the wrong time, but I didn't really bother with carrying it, it still worked out. Once Zaz is back in prison, he can start putting tally marks on the walls again where they're supposed to go. Number 10, Mad Hatter. This is just a horde battle where you have to occasionally bop the Hatter when he appears and starts charging up some kind of laser explosion thing. This is the best opportunity in the main story to get a free flow combo of 50 if you need that trophy. Not that it's particularly hard to get it elsewhere, but the dudes here spawn one after the other in a nice rhythm, so you can just go around the area like whack-a-mole and put them down in succession. Luckily, Batman's got a mind like a steel trap. If Scarecrow Fear Gas can't overpower him, there's no way Mad Hatter Hypnosis is doing a damn thing besides giving him a funny hat. Number 9, Mr. Hammer. A boss in a loose sense of the word, but since you have to keep hitting him until he's knocked out, it's more traditional than anything else has been so far. If you see a lot of dudes crowding him, you can quick fire an electric shock and it'll make him spin around and knock him all over, which is neat. Otherwise, you automatically initiate the beatdown animation when you hit him, but he doesn't stagger, so you can do between 5 to 10 hits to him and then just dodge away when you see him wind up the hammer and then get right back in there. Whether you focus him down or thin the crowd first, it doesn't really matter too much since he's also a useful tool for thinning the crowd himself. Number 8, Mr. Sickle. If you had to pick, would you rather be the hammer or the sickle? The hammer seems more masculine. You could do some double entendre action bragging about your massive hammer, but nobody's like, hey girl, wanna check out my sickle? It sounds more like a threat. What's your sickle gonna do, shave her? Granted, that is a service some women pay for, but then you sound more capitalist than communist, and Mother Russia does not like that. These bosses are the exact same difficulty because they are this exact same thing. Number 7, Harley Quinn. In the post-game mission, you play as Robin helping Batman take down Harley Quinn. This is one of two, I guess three, silent predator type bosses that have a visible health bar, but this is by far the easier one. I assume it works the same as the Two-Face boss you do as Catwoman, which would mean that the goons spawn endlessly as you take them out, so the only reason you should bother is if one is in the way of you getting a clean takedown on Harley Quinn. It's not a tall order as Robin, though, because you can easily get glide kicks or drop attacks or silent takedowns and then grapple back up to the rafters before anyone knows what happened. Anytime Harley is attacked, all the dudes converge on her position, by which time she's probably already eagerly isolating herself in another corner of the map with how fast she walks away from everyone trying to protect her. Seems very on brand. Number 6, Solomon Grundy. It's nice to have a use for quick fire explosive gel, something I otherwise would have never incorporated into any other strategy under any other circumstance and would not even think it would be an option. It's got some hidden utility though. Not only is it necessary for exploding the areas the beams of light come through to hurt the boss, but the act of using it also doubles as kind of a half-ass dodge, so you can avoid Grundy's slam sometimes if you time it right. If someone was dodging my attacks with these dainty little cartwheels, I'd be pissed off too, especially someone as otherwise dark and menacing as Batman, seeing that dude doing ballet looking moves around my shit would be infuriating. Whenever you empty Grundy's bar with the explosions, run up and beat on him to start the next phase, which just incrementally adds some other attacks to dodge, like shockwaves that have to be evaded over, and smaller windows of safety to do your little Girl Scout exploding cartwheels. It's a formulaic boss, not a big deal. Number 5, Mr. Freeze. I debated putting this boss harder because if you're a casual Batman enjoyer like me, you may not immediately think of all 12 fucking ways you have to differently take down this man as he adapts to all of your strats in real time. Mr. Freeze feels like a direct response to people, aka me, who were annoyed at the boss fighty nature of bosses in the last game, who never learned from anything you did and just repeated the same mistakes, specifically the Joker fight at the end of Asylum. 
because this dude is like the goddamn Terminator. I also think hard mode gives him like twice as much health because I flat out don't remember having to do so many different things to win. I remember doing like five takedowns back in the day and now I'm using gadgets I didn't even know had offensive capabilities. He is an adaptation machine. Sneak up behind him and get a silent takedown and for the rest of the encounter he will shit out ice particles in front of his ass so you can't do it again. Get a takedown from a grate below him, he will freeze up that whole section of grate so it can't be used. Use the disruptor to jam his gun once and he will magically change the entire programming code of his weapon so it won't work further. This fight took me 10 minutes, four of which were probably spent trying to get him to walk in the water puddle so I could shock it with a button press, but he kept like skirting around it and being a bitch. He follows your footprints everywhere, so he moves behind you according to how you moved, which is how you can set him up to fall in the dozen traps you have to rig for him. At the start of the fight, Batman's like, Oracle, send me the telemetry of Frieza's suit so I can look for weaknesses. And then she sends that data like eight minutes later, leaving you to figure out what you can. And then if the fight takes too long, they give you the cheat sheet, which I required because I had no idea I could bum rush him with a line launcher and look like a fucking idiot in the process. This is probably technically the best boss in the game, but knowledge is your friend and if he shows up late to the party it can be annoying. Number 4, Joker and Co. This is a good test of your ability to handle crowds, especially with enemies of different types. Mr. Hammer's back on the scene, as well as a Titan for good measure, but Titans in Arkham City are way easier to deal with since you just have to do the right combo and then beat on them for a few seconds. All the while, Joker is a pale face in the crowd, volunteering to get countered and batted away every few seconds, functioning as a low-level thug that just doesn't stay down until everyone else does. I recommend unlocking the Battering, X and Circle finisher ASAP in this game and using it relentlessly. You can usually take three or four dudes out of play if you don't get interrupted in your combo. The finisher that destroys enemy weapons is good here too, otherwise all the thugs are playing hot potato with the lone knife on the scene and it's the most annoying thing to get distracted by when you're attacking others because it takes the most energy to dodge. Stay away from the tracks on the sides too, because when they light up it means you're about to get t-boned by Beppy the Clown. Number 3, Clayface. The final boss of Arkham City, other than the Harley bonus episode, Clayface is a boss that seems invincible until the game just decides that he isn't. The free strats are a good idea, but they don't stop him. Even when you freeze him and cut him up into little pieces, he still regenerates, so I don't get why at the end we jump at his mouth and do one big slash from the inside when he's not even frozen and act like that's any different from what already wasn't working. We're still just cutting slow and he just decides not to regenerate that time. Anyway, it's a good thing we brought a small army's worth of freeze grenades because we're throwing the whole supply at him. Countering certain moves, dodging others, getting extra damage out of making him run into explosives when he's a ball by standing in front of them, and spamming freeze grenades like we're trying to put out hell itself, and that is the general gameplay loop of this boss. It's hard on your R2 button. Batman has the stamina of a bionic Olympian. The third phase alone, I don't know how anyone slices through over a hundred sludge monsters all told, probably, without dropping dead of a heart attack. Make sure you're still lobbing ice bombs at the pile himself during this phase to lower his max HP and prevent regeneration while you do the thousand heartless challenge on his slimy midgets. Number 2, Raish Al Ghul. A horde of ninjas with persistent background attacks to dodge, several phases, and big AoE gambits from the head honcho make Raish's fight a tough one. When he turns big, you should just spam the hell out of the electric charge. It's much faster than trying to time and pick your moments through the enemy's defenses. And remember that this is back before every game was Dark Souls, so dodge Dodging through saw blades and giant shurikens is not going to work. I thought I was going to have a really hard time on this boss, but the first time I died it spawned me on his second phase, so it's kind of like the poison ivy fight from Asylum in that way, and it's why Ra's al Ghul isn't number one, Two-Face. The hardest boss in Batman Arkham City is Two-Face as Catwoman. Like when you're Catwoman, not Two-Face pretending to be Catwoman, although he is equally as feisty. Why is this hard? It's a predator challenge with no grappling hook and endlessly respawning goons. If you're spotted, there's virtually no recourse but to sprint away and hope they're bad at aiming, which they are not. You can't even trust perching up on the ceiling because dudes will randomly decide that actually they can totally see you up there. All that to say nothing of the fact that your Catwoman probably has like no upgrades unless you spent two weeks doing all the Riddler shit beforehand, because why would you waste upgrades on her when Batman demands literally all of them? You don't get anything for her that helps with a stealth mission anyway besides the armor to tank one extra shotgun blast if you mess up, so it's a moot point. The same Harley Quinn principle applies here though, which is that when you do take down Two-Face, it alerts everybody and they all run over there and group up, giving you more of the map to work with to circle around them all, depending on where Two-Face goes next. This took me probably a dozen tries. Some of it's RNG, whether or not a grunt will be in the wrong place at the wrong time to ruin your approach, or whether they split up quickly after you initially group them together and you gotta re-kite them. 
But that's gonna do it for this boss ranking. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Batman Arkham Origins is next, so stay tuned for that. Watch all my other videos with Detective Mode on for 90% of them, and I'll see you guys next time.